Now that we have our board design ready, we have one more step to follow, and that is to fill these empty areas on the board, all these areas, with copper. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One reason here is the machines that make the circuit boards here on campus have to go back and forth and back and forth to remove all those little strips of copper. So it makes the board production much faster here on campus. And then sometimes you'll do this because you'll want better noise immunity and stronger grounds. So I'll show you how to do these functions. Right up here in our tools, we'll click on the place polygon plane symbol up here, right up here. Before I place anything, I'll hit tab because I want to set one of the properties, and that is what net do I want this plane to be? You see, I can make that plane be any net that I have available on my entire design. I'm going to choose ground. There's different types of layouts you can do. I'm going to do solid copper. You can do a hatch, or you can just do an outline. But I want solid copper because my whole idea here is to have a nice ground plane and to not waste time on our laser mills here removing the copper. So I'll unpause. I'll come up here. Just going to draw a box around this. Just like this. When I'm done drawing the box, I'll right click. And there we can see we've poured copper all around our board. And you'll notice any connection that was already ground has a little spoke here connecting it to the ground plane. So now we have that poured, but I notice one thing when I look at it. There's not going to be much copper to remove. That's going to be fast for our machine, but that's going to be easy to get a short between here and here when I solder. There's not much space there. So let's edit our rules and generate a little more space. So I'm going to go to Design Rules, and under Clearance, Here's our copper pour. I'm going to make copper to track, copper to SMD, copper to through hole, copper to via, all 50 mils. Copper to copper can be 10. And apply and say OK. Now you'll see a bunch of errors, right? Because things are now too close. I set this rule to be 50. And it's 10 right here, so we have a problem. So let's come up here to Tools, Polygon Pours, Repour All. I'm going to tell it to repour all the pours, even though I only have one. I'll tell it repour all. Hey, look at that. Now I have a 50 mil space around all my traces. Very nice. I'll go to the top layer and do the same thing. Right here, place polygon plane. I'll hit tab. Yep, it's already ground. Unpause. All right. We'll just draw this box. All right, there. And there's our copper pour on the top. Very nice. Now, if I go to Tools and back to Polygon Pours, you see this symbol that says Shelve Two Polygons. If I click on that, my polygons disappear. But they're basically up on a shelf somewhere where I can't see them. This lets me see through my board and have access to my board visually. When I'm done looking at it and doing whatever I need to do, I can come back to Tools. Well, let's just make a change first. What if I just happen to grab this guy and drag him like this? All right, I'll save it. 
and I'll say tools polygon pours restore now you see there's errors and there's errors because I move this so I'll come back to tools polygon pours repour all and there we go I now have everything back and it's reported to match this change so we'll do a file save all oh, that's good okay if we've finished our board and we've poured our copper and we are ready to make our board uh, I probably make one more change let's make one more change I'm on the top layer I'm gonna tell it to place a string and this string is on the top layer I can always hit tab and say what layer I want this one's on the top layer and I'm gonna put something in here I'll put my initials and a version number and I'll come and place it somewhere and what do I need to do then tools polygon pours report all so now I have my initials and my board number on here so I know it's my board when I look at it and I know which version it is you know it's not a mistake it's not version uh, 1.1 or 2.9 I know which version it is and also because I put this on the top I know which is the top of my board because boards made here on campus won't have this nice top overlay right the silk screen we can't do that here so this looks much nicer so let's save all again and then we want to generate files that we can use to uh, produce our boards these are the same files that the companies will need if you ship your board off you want to send this out somewhere they're going to want these files and it's the same files that we need here on campus and to generate these files we come to file fabrication output and Gerber files I'll click on that and it's important to remember this setup our units are in inches and we're doing two by five because I'm going to need to match this when I do the drill holes we can come to drill layers I'm sorry just layers and then which ones do we want to plot well I'm gonna let Altium be smart for me and say whatever I used turn on and it turns them on I'm gonna say okay and it generates this cam file I can right click that and just say save it and I'll come back to my PCB back to file back to fabrication outputs and I want NC drill files so I'll click on NC drill files and here's where I need to match the previous one inches 2 by 5 I'll say OK the units everything here is OK just hit OK there's my drill holes so I can right click here save this guy OK and there's my op amp I think if I do a file save all all right now that we've saved the files let's take a look at them here's where I saved my particular project the temp directory and op amp and you'll see I now have a folder called project outputs for op amp I'm going to double click that and open it up and here's all my files that I use to generate a board now these are all Gerber files but you can actually open them up and look at them here's our uh, GBL that's Gerber bottom layer GKO Gerber keep out we use that to define our board shape GTL Gerber top layer and the only one that doesn't make a lot of sense this DRR is not our drill file actually the opamp.txt is the drill file and if I open that up we can see that it really is just a text file and this is the information that the machine needs 
to move itself around and drill the right holes with the right tool. So the files that we'll end up uploading on the server here on campus will be the bottom layer, the keep out, the top layer, and text. Those will be the four that we're going to use here on campus. All right, we're going to open a web page now. And the web page will be seniordesign.ece.ufl.edu. This is a page we're going to use to uh, check out programmers, to upload your files, to get your boards made. So you'll put your email in here. There's my email. I'll put in my passcode and I'll log in. There we go. So now I'm logged in. It knows it's me. If you don't have an account, you can uh, uh, register one and then have the TA authenticate it for you. You'll have to activate it after you do that. But I can go to mill request and you'll see mill request form quantity. When you do your first Altium design as a module and you're just turning the files in to get them tested but not built, we put a quantity of 9999. And then I'm going to browse where is my design going to be. So I'll come here to the C drive. I'll go to temp. I'll do this op amp project outputs for op amp and now this one wants the gerber top layer all right top copper so now if i hover over this now you'll see it shows it op amp dot gtl gerber top layer so we'll go to the bottom copper which is gerber bottom layer yep that one's okay i hover over i see it show board outline Gerber keep out and then NC drill and the NC drill is our text file here. Now it's going to ask some questions. Did you include teardrops? Uh, maybe I'll show you how to do that real quick and we're done here. I didn't need them here. Are your traces at least 20 mils? Are you requesting more than one board? No. I'm going to put down here, this is just test files, and I'll submit it. There we go. So now I have a request. My request is 8077. Now, teardrops, let's take a look at that real quick. It's something we can add in. So if I go to Tools, Polygon Pours, and Shelve these, I believe... I can go to Tools and Teardrops, and you'll see what it's going to do. It's going to take this trace where there's a sharp edge there, where it goes from a line to a radius, and make it ramp out, right? Soften those edges up. Softening the edges up are very helpful in some cases. It'll make it more robust, more... Uh, more stress resistant to being flexed and torqued, which happens a lot in this class because you're going to be troubleshooting and trying to fix things. So I'm going to tell it OK, and we're going to watch and see what happens to these pads and traces. Look at that. I made teardrops, and I'll look at this edge. No more sharp edge, right? It's coming in nice and smooth. So we can go back to tools. Let's see, Polygon Pours, Restore, and Tools, Polygon Pours, Repore All. So now I have teardrops. That's what it was asking about before. And there's the teardrops. It'll make your board a little more mechanically uh, uh, safe, right? It's going to be a little more robust mechanically because you can stress it a little bit and the traces won't crack as easy. Anytime you have a sharp edge and it gets stressed several times, it's liable to crack. All right, I think that's going to finish up our video here. This will get you through uh, starting a project, adding libraries, placing parts, putting the parts on your PC board, defining your PC board shape, adding some holes so you have some way to mount this or have it stand on something, not just laying on the tabletop. 
uh, routing everything, doing your copper pours and teardrops, generating files, uh, should be everything you need. All right, there's going to be a couple more videos that will have some useful tools. So I'll see you on the next one.